Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, Friday morning. Good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Let me adjust this camera a little bit. Good to see you this morning. Friday, high energy, finishing the week, heading into the weekend. Good afternoon in England. Yeah, good afternoon. Good to have you on the broadcast. High energy. High energy Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get the coffee going. All right, Waldorf, Maryland, Indianapolis, Michigan City, good morning. High energy. High energy in the MC. All right. We're going to finish the week strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish the week strong. Head into the weekend strong. Believing that the Lord God is the Almighty One. He is the Lord of hosts. Boston is here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Olympia Fields, Illinois. High energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the coffee going. Get some breakfast going. Get the juicer going. Come on, come on. Naperville, New York. Good morning, good morning. New York, NY is here. Guyana. All right. What is it? Afternoon in Guyana? Morning? What is it? Miami, Florida. All right. Good morning, good morning. OKC is here. Muncie, Indiana. Mississippi is here. Yeah. We're taking the flag down, man. We're taking it down. All right. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release the hearts. So you know what to do. Tap, tap, tap away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. England, it's 13.52 hours. Okay. What is that? 13. 152 in the afternoon. Is that what it is? Chicago Heights, Olympia Fields, Virginia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you on the broadcast. All right. 10 o'clock in Guyana. Going on 10 o'clock. Okay. All right. All right. Michigan is here. Yeah, 152 in England. Okay. 13.52 military time. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thanks for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts. Glenwood is here. All right. Anthony Ward Sr. Arlington Heights is here. God bless you. Wisconsin. Great teaching. I didn't even say anything yet. <laughs> yeah, the 24-hour clock. I got it. I got it. All right. Good to see you guys this morning. God bless you so much. It is Friday. We are finishing the week. Somebody said we're finishing it strong. Absolutely. Finishing the week strong. We're heading into the weekend. It's going to be a powerful weekend in the presence of God. I saw Washington State. The West Coast is here. All right. All right. It's going to be a great weekend. Uh, so I hope you're ready for it. Hope you are prepared for greatness this weekend. If you're in the Chicago area, uh, tonight at Cornerstone, we have all night prayer for, for all of the wives so if you are a wife, if you're married and you're female, uh, you are invited to come and be a part of the all-night prayer tonight at Cornerstone. Starts at 9 p.m., goes all through the night till 7 a.m. Saturday morning. Some powerful prayer going on for marriages and families. So come on out and be a part of that. Also in the Chicago area is the Breakthrough Summit that begins tonight and goes into the day tomorrow. Uh, Dan Johnson is the host of that. It's going to be at Prayer and Faith Outreach Ministries on 103rd Street with Bishop William Hudson. And uh, Cindy Trim is going to be there, as well as some others. It's going to be a powerful time for business people, entrepreneurs, those of you that are wanting to launch forward financially. It's going to be a great time, the Breakthrough Summit tonight and tomorrow. And then also, tomorrow morning, for those of you here, the regulars on the broadcast, and I want you to invite some people to come on with you, tomorrow morning is Second Saturday Leader Scope, March the 12th at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to launch into our second Saturday Leader Scope, uh, an extended teaching, 45-minute teaching uh, for leadership people, and that will start at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. We'll, we should be finished by 8.45 Central Standard Time, so I hope that you will come on and join me tomorrow morning. Later on today, I will have a handout up on my website, greghouse.com, and also on my Facebook wall under the notes section. So you can look for that handout in those two places and utilize that for the broadcast tomorrow. And hopefully that will help you uh, moving forward, okay? All right, we're ready for it. Tomorrow's going to be a great, great time. And then don't forget to get into your local church this Sunday. It's going to be a powerful Sunday uh, in the presence of God in the house of the Lord. God has chosen Mount Zion, and we're going to be in Mount Zion this Sunday. It's going to be awesome. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I started talking to you about congruence. 
personal congruence, and I was talking to you about our necessity to develop ourselves, to develop our internal foundation, to develop how we function in our own personal identity. And some of the key scriptures I gave you were found in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23, where the Bible says that we're to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 9 says, when we walk with integrity, we will be found in a place of security. So integrity takes us to security. Proverbs 11 and verse 3 says that the integrity of the upright will guide them. So we want to make sure we're living in integrity because that, that integrity will guide us, it will direct us, it will lead us. And then revelation plays a part in this. Psalm 18:28 says, For you will light my lamp, the Lord God will enlighten my darkness. The Lord will enlighten my darkness. So we're looking for revelation to be a source of power and influence in each and every one of us. Now, congruence is a word that has something to do with agreement or harmony, or you might think in terms of a symphony orchestra or something being in concert. So when we speak of personal congruence, we're talking about every aspect of our lives, every facet of our personal being coming together as one so that our lives are not fragmented into multiple pieces, but we are functioning in life as one whole human being. Congruence means agreement, harmony, and symphony. The Latin word means I meet together or I agree. And so every part of our lives will come to meet together, and every part of our lives will come to a point of agreement. Agreement. So it's like we're going to be in agreement with God and we're going to be in agreement with ourselves. No more arguing with ourselves. No more finding fault with ourselves. No more criticizing ourselves. But we are bringing our lives into the position of congruence. Say it with me. Congruence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in agreement. It's in harmony. It's in symphony. Now to do that, number one, you must bring yourself into alignment with the will of God. That is crucial. You as an individual must be in alignment with the will of God. Secondly, you must rid yourself of every internal contradiction. Every point of restraint, every point of inward resistance, every stronghold in your life, all of that has to be addressed and it must be eliminated so that our lives can come to a place of congruence. Then the next step, number three, is to identify and develop our signature strengths. Too often we're working on our weaknesses and putting all of our attention on our weaknesses where the effective thing is to identify your strengths and then go to work developing your strengths because it's your strengths that will attract attention to you. People are going to notice you because of the strengths that you have developed in your life. Number five, you're going to identify and utilize your gifts. The gifts that your Heavenly Father has imparted into your life, those gifts must be identified and they must be utilized. You must put the gifts to work. Then you must also discover and define your passion. That's number five. Find out what your passion is. What is it that moves you? What is it that stirs you? What is it that makes you angry? What is it that stirs up jealousy in your life? Jealousy in a healthy way. Jealousy to make things right. Jealousy for justice. What is that? That is your passion. So identify that, de de uh, uh, discover it, and, and develop it, and define it, and stir it up in your life. And then you must discover the proper role or the proper setting in which you can utilize your talents and your gifts. You need to be in the right setting, the setting that fits your passion so that your gifts and your talents can be utilized properly. Then number eight, you must move through the process of character development. Move through the process of character development where you have integrity, as the cornerstone of your life and honesty as the core of your life. 
this process of developing your character is creating a context in which God will be glorified by perfecting the image of Christ in your life and through your life. So you must develop your character in order to bring your life into congruence. Then number nine, it's important that you discover the still small voice. Do you remember Elijah hearing the still small voice of the Lord? You can find that in 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah heard the voice of God as a still small voice. The earthquake was there, the winds were there, the fire was there. All of these dramatic manifestations were there, but Elijah heard a still small voice voice. Isaiah 30, 21 goes along with that. Isaiah says, you will hear a voice behind you. You'll hear a voice whispering to you. We, we need to be in tune, in frequency with the voice of God coming into our lives. Number 10, you must also discover the presence, the presence of God, the ark of the covenant that you're carrying in your life. Communion with God, you need to discover that for yourself. Number 11, you need to live by kingdom attributes. The kingdom attributes that God has provided for us in his word. And then number 12, you need to develop a sharp intuition or you might call it discernment for seeing into the future so that you know what's coming at you. In John 16, 13, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come and he will show us things that are coming our way. He will show us where we're moving. He will show us where we're headed as we move into the future that God has provided for us. And then number 13, to bring your life into congruence, you must make a decision. Discover the power of decision making. Because when you make a decision, you're cutting off all other options. You're cutting off all other alternatives because you are fully persuaded that this thing you are deciding on is the right thing for you, and it's in alignment with the will of God. So we want to move in that direction of decision-making in order to bring our lives into congruence. And then finally, number 14, you will become a compacted expression of the will of God. That's what you're going to become as your life comes into congruence, a compacted expression of of the will of God being manifested in the earth. Isn't that tremendous? Man, I'm telling you that's powerful. That is powerful. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Now, I want to just kind of switch gears here, share a couple of things with you that I believe God is saying to all of us. And one of those things that God is saying to us is that this is the time where he's releasing the new wine. And so we must be in position to receive the new wine that's coming into our lives. That means there's going to be a bubbling up in us. The fermentation process is moving in us. There's an expanding of the move of God in our lives and in our churches. Fermentation is happening. It is a time of a jubilee celebration. The joy of the Lord is our strength and we rejoice in him in the new wine. And this is also a time for fresh oil. Psalm 92.10 says, anoint me with fresh oil. So we want that fresh oil, that fresh anointing to be mighty on our lives. It's that anointing oil of Psalm 133 that begins on the head of Aaron. It runs down his beard, the place of maturity, and it runs down to the rest of the garments on his body. So the anointing, this fresh oil, begins at the head. It begins in leadership. And then it moves down through the leadership team, through the beard. And then the oil comes down on the garment, which is the rest of the house of the Lord, the, the body of saints that are gathering together. We need that fresh oil flowing in us and through us. So that an issue with a woman of blood has to come, and all she needs to do is touch the hem of the garment. If she touches the hem of the garment, watch it now, she gets the same intensity of anointing as she would if she was touching the head because the same anointing on the head is on the beard and it's on the garment oh hallelujah and then thirdly there is unique water for us 
the unique water that God is releasing from heaven. So our cry is, let the river come down. Let the river of God come down from heaven to affect us here on the earth. So this unique water is a place for splashing and refreshing, jumping up and down and playing, frolicking, if you will. Playing in the, in, in the joy of our God, in the refreshment of our God. It is a place of awakening, like, like somebody splashing cold water in your face. It's waking you up. That's what this unique water is doing. It is bringing us to a place of awakening. Now, those of you that are prophets and intercessors, it's crucial for you to rise up in this time. No more weariness. We, we dealt with weariness earlier this week. So the prophets are not going to be stuck in weariness. The intercessors are no longer going to be captured in weariness. But we're going to move with the strength of our God, with this anointing that is coming upon us for this season right now. Fresh oil is upon the prophets. Fresh oil is upon the intercessors. And so we need intercessors and prophets who will be intersecting with each other so that we will have prophets who are praying and he, we will have intercessors who are acting prophetically. It's going to be a combination of both. The prophets are praying, the intercessors are moving prophetically, and together, prophets and intercessors are accomplishing some explosive, dynamic things for the kingdom of God. It's the time of breakthrough. It's the time for God to arise and his enemies to be scattered. We are in that time right now. And with all of that, we must be clothed with humility. God says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so in this hour, we must be humbling ourselves. James talks about humbling yourself. Peter talks about humbling yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. Not just a fashionable humility that we put on for a show, but we really authentically, sincerely put pride away from us. We put arrogance and haughtiness away from us. And we come into this place of humility, wearing the clothing of humility as prophets and intercessors so that we might move into the full impact of everything that God wants to accomplish through our lives. So today we talked about congruence. We talked about the new wine. We talked about the fresh oil. We talked about the unique water that God is releasing. I'm encouraging prophets and intercessors today so we have a full gamut, a full plate of food for us to partake of moving into the weekend. Hallelujah. All right, now don't forget, tomorrow morning is Second Saturday Leader Scope, an extended teaching, 45-minute teaching. We begin at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. I hope that you'll join with me. Invite some of your friends and followers to come on with me, and we're going to have a great time tomorrow morning, Second Saturday Leader Scope. The handout will be up on my website and on my Facebook page a little bit later today. Greg Howes, H-O-W-S-E dot com and Facebook page, Greg Howes, H-O-W-S-E. All right. God bless you. Have a great Friday. High energy today. High energy heading into the weekend. It's going to be tremendous. I'm grateful for you. I love you. Thank you so much for being on with me today. I appreciate it. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God bless you.